It's two minutes after eight o'clock. Good morning and thank you very much for joining us. This is a situation with Kenya's biggest conversation. We're broadcasting in Nairobi, 94.4, 87.9 in Mombasa, 102.5 in Kisumu, 96.0 in Nakuru, 96.7 Eldoret, 97.7 in Malindi. And in Nyeri, it's 90.9. And this morning, we know in the frequency of 90.9 Nyeri, we've got very many listeners, especially from the area of Laikipia, because we have the governor of Laikipia, Mr. Derito Moredi, in the studio good morning and welcome karibu sana to the hot seats well thank you uh, good morning to all of you good morning, good morning. now Santa Santa, for joining us yeah this is your uh, first time coming into the studio uh, of course we'll be inviting you over and over and over again so uh, be prepared for that first let's talk about laikipia and uh, laikipia of course is a hugely cosmopolitan you know county many people would, mm-hmm. many people would not know that so laikipia's headquarters is nanyuki uh, we know the other areas around uh, Laikipia County. Uh, give us just a quick lay of the land of Laikipia uh, since you joined, uh, since you took over as governor. Uh, well, thank you, Eric. Uh, you know, I was listening to you guys on the radio on the way in, mm. and um, you're talking about this whole matter of breastfeeding. Mm. <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, just two weeks ago, mm. I was opening a crash. Mm-hmm. for the uh, people who work in the county assembly as well as the executive side in Nanyuki. Mm-hmm. Um, so here's my two, my two, my contribution to that whole debate. Yes. <laughs> is that, yes. Is that um, although you might say uh, that uh, objectification of, of, of breasts and so on, but I think the whole point is to provide a mother with an environment that she can nurture an infant mm. and still be able to work without those two things uh, being seemingly in conflict. Mm. And I think that's why generally, if, not just in Kenya, I think global best practice is to provide a space where, where, where lactating mothers could, could um, you know, attend to an infant uh, and be able to to con- and anyway, this is in Nanyuki mm-hmm. at the county assembly compound uh, for use by uh, the folks who work at the county assemblies, both the honourable members and their staff, as well as uh, of course my staff on the executive side. Mm-hmm. Uh, Laikipia, you ask. Uh, Laikipia is about ten thousand square kilometers. Mm. Uh, that's about the size of what used to be called Central Kenya. So if you take Nyeri. Uh, Kiambu, <laughs> Nyandarwa. <laughs> Wait, uh, so like you know, is that, it's, it's that, is that, that oh. size? It's about that right. size. Uh-huh. Interesting opening sentence. <laughs> yeah. so it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a large space. Yep. Um, our gazetted headquarter is actually Rumuruti. Ah, I see. Although uh, both the executive and the assembly, we operate from Nanyuki uh, because of historical issues. Mm-hmm. Uh, that the facilities are not available. We are only now building uh, facilities in uh, in Rumuruti. Uh, Nanyuki is on the western tip of of Laikipia. Uh, from Nanyuki to Churu, which is our boundary uh, with Baringo, mm. uh, would be approximately 110 kilometers. And from Nyahururu to Suguta Marmar, which is our northern boundary uh, with Samburu, uh, about 141 kilometers. So it, it is a big, a, a big, a reasonably big county. Mm. Uh, you're right. Uh, all of Kenya lives there, and we like it that way. Mm-hmm. In uh, in my public service, uh, we have 32 of Kenya's ethnic communities working there, uh, including uh, perhaps some of the smallest, uh, like Yaku mm. and Jems. Uh, but we are all there, Kikuyus, Trukana, Samburu, Maasai. It's a melting um, pot of Kenya, would abs- you say? Absolutely. A mixed mm. race? Uh, mixed race, uh, <laughs> <laughs> indeed. I know it's uh, the headquarters for, for mixed race people, apparently. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah. So, Karibu Nisana. As we say, Tembea like Ipia or Sema like Ipia. Now, there's a lot of work that, uh, of course, you started. You came in and started working on, and there's stuff that that you've done. So, one of them, of course, you've told us it's about that inclusivity of uh, all communities being feeling represented in in the county assembly. But also, there's the issue that um, has actually emerged: the issue of uh, provision of public health care. And you know, yeah. Nanyuki has some people have actually quoted and cited Nanyuki as one of the models of uh, universal health care. 
And I can tell you, Eric, I mean, I don't want to pretend it's an easy, it's been an easy ride. Mm. We, we've had some quite uh, tense conversations, including with the medics. Uh, but right now, we, we, we a number of positives about where we are. Mm. We are leading in terms of household uh, insurance, uh, health insurance. About 60% of our households uh, have um, NHIF. Mm-hmm. And, and this is because we go door to door. We have uh, CHVs, uh, community health volunteers, mm-hmm. and every day they go out door to door to households to talk about health. And they have a mobile application that then we use, it's called Mjali, that we use to register uh, people onto NHIF. Um, so we've had, uh, uh, I would say, reasonable success in ensuring that. Uh, UHC is happening. Mm. There's still some big issues to deal with. One of which is, is of course, having the right HR. And, and it's a deep conversation because some people think the right HR for UHC is uh, talking about specialists. See, the kind of doctors that you might find at the top referral hospital. Mm. But nothing could be uh, further from the truth. Uh, UHC is about get, covering the entire population with the most level of service in a way that does not financially ruin them. Mm-hmm. So in an affordable way. Mm-hmm. So affordability, almost by definition, will be a function of, of health insurance so that you spread the risk across the whole population. Having services to everybody is about what is happening at dispensary level, at health center level, so that you're providing a service close to the citizen. And, of course, uh, then are you able to cover the entire population? Uh, so including hard to reach areas because mm. there are some corners where you may not you know the population may not be large enough for you to put a health uh, facility or a health center for instance so how do you get to those pockets uh, of populations so those are the things we, 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 we're dealing with and the way we have gone about it uh, is a to reform the system in our own culture about what this thing is uh, so to get uh, the the team working on health, first of all, focused on what is our mission in terms of achieving UHC, Mm. um, to make sure that we use data and we understand disease patterns. For instance, the the complaint often in Kenya that there are no drugs in facilities is actually a failure of connecting data to action. Mm. Because you see, disease patterns are not even they're not uniform they're not uniform you will I'll give you an, a, a practical example nyaururu is high and it is cold mm-hmm. now we get 9000 cases of arthritis visits by uh, you know patients with arthritis mm-hmm. in and around the facilities in nyaururu 9000 per what per year okay but if you go to romuruti or doldol you will never get a case so you, you have to understand the, the and then position the drugs where they're needed, where they're needed because it's not, it's not a un, uniform thing. But I, I feel quite proud of what, uh, where we've gotten to. And, uh, and, uh, but I would have to say it's work in progress. When you say where you've gotten to, uh, what is it that you had envisioned? Well, I envision 100% coverage mm. in terms of health insurance, for instance. Mm. I envision... Um, uh, all dispensaries having a certain level of diagnostic capability, like the hemograph machine. You know, there's a machine where you do blood work. Mm. Now, when you think on it, 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 there's no reason why that uh, sample is going to a sub-county hospital or to a county hospital uh, for analysis. It can happen in the dispensary, and that's what we want. We want a circumstance where the nurse at the dispensary in Ronyek or some other place does the blood work and can be in touch with a specialist hundreds or thousands of kilometers away to agree on how to manage that case. Mm-hmm. So that, that's what we envision, is that we cover the whole population with the ability to pay for health insurance. How long were you hoping that this would take? Um, I had actually thought it was going to be a three-year proposition. That's why I say I'm happy with where we are at around uh, 60 62%. Um, yeah, I had hoped that within to a three-year period to, to be able to go to all these households. By next year? By the end of next year. So you're still on course, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. I'm happy with where we are. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I had, I had uh, some things have actually... Surpassed uh, your expectations. Exactly. Mm. Thank you. Mm. 
uh, English. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I was going to ask a question, and usually I'm not the nicest when it comes to questioning, so I'm going to bring out oh, something quite difficult and awkward. Um, we're speaking of insurance. <laughs> <laughs> it's something you've, I'm sure, dealt with, uh, given the accusations were uh, in uh, in the media, yeah. and it was to do with your, the procurement of uh, your insurance for your members of staff yeah. and your vehicles, Indeed. whereby you were accused of uh, not having followed the proper mechanisms, and there was 34.7 million in terms of an insurance tender that was awarded to four companies without having followed the proper routes. Now, the media gave us a glimpse of this, but uh, media being who they are, we they never who then... We are. Yeah. <laughs> they. Who we are. <laughs> <laughs> the, those those <laughs> people in the they, media. They didn't follow through. <laughs> so other than the accusations and the story, mm -hmm. we then never heard what happened. I know you were faced. Uh, you were facing a committee in terms of you were being questioned about it. But uh, the media didn't give the public the conclusion to this. They tend to do that. There's accusations that are thrown around. We get a little bit of it, but we never hear if it was an audit query. We never hear whether you handed in the proper documentation thereafter mm -hmm. or what happened following that. Uh, well. We, I did appear before the Senate Committee mm -hmm. on Public Accounts mm -hmm. uh, on a number of items. Uh, one item, which everybody uh, does, I think up to now, appreciate, is a question of IFMIS mm -hmm. and the fact that uh, the IFMIS system is not 100%. Right. Um, so when you, when, you, when, you, when you generate reports from IFMIS, some reports are quite... Um, and I think, not I think, I know for fact, mm. because we have documentation that the IFMIS people uh, accept that some things to be improved on it. On the issue of, uh, the, that, uh, the, the issue that Senator Kajuang raised, he mm. wanted to see the insurance policy itself. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have it. And that was what the Hula Balu was about. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, you can well understand, uh, we come to Nairobi, you know, it's not as though we put all the files in the Land Rover. <laughs> in the Land Rover. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't have the uh, that, particular, that document. particular document that mm -hmm. he asked for. Could it but have I, been scanned and sent but, to you? Given but, uh, uh, the well, yeah, yeah, it could have been scanned. But mm -hmm. we are sitting in the committee. He's saying, right. "Give it." If I were to challenge you, give me this document right now. Mm -hmm. You may not have mm -hmm. it. Uh, have to give me the time. Hands. Yeah. But I want to tell you, um, if there is any public service that is undergoing amazing reform is like Ipia. Mm -hmm. And you must have seen the news like two or three days ago mm -hmm. um, about the number of people we have prosecuted uh, mm -hmm. from across the system mm -hmm. and the number of people we have exited from the system. Basically ask not to return to work if the allegations of corruption have been leveled. Yes, they, I mean, we, I have just sacked uh, mm -hmm. an officer mm -hmm. because of j an adverse... Uh, audit opinion. Mm. Yeah, you have to look. This is Kenya of today, and there is not going to be room mm -hmm. for that kind of behavior mm. in Kenya um, of today. Well, in my <laughs> Kenya, okay, in yeah. my in government, in like it's, it's best. It's yeah. better you say that. <laughs> there is not going to be room. Does that mean for, there's a job for, vacancy? Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm sure. Well. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm I sure do like Nanyuki. I'm sure you recognize yeah. the job and application when you hear one. Yeah. 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 Look, the <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, it is it is a, it is a continuing pro process. Mm -hmm. But I, allow me to no, just, just summarize it. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. the issue. Uh, as I walked in, as I came into office, mm -hmm. uh, because you see, the fish uh, starts rotting from from the from head. head. Absolutely. Now, my county executive. That recruitment process was a professional process handled by Deloitte and Touche. Mm. Right. I mean, that's who I am, and that's what I bring to the table mm -hmm. as a leader in this country. Mm -hmm. um, so, you, you know, you, you, wanted to work, you applied. Mm -hmm. and, and it wasn't a question that you were on my campaign or your mindset. You applied. Mm. So you, you needed to, to be able to prove uh, that you have some competence. Mm. The second bit that I did was, in fact, to, to exit the public service board. Because it is the key agent to help me manage the public service. Mm. So I did this. Um, the third thing that I did is to uh, get people, A, you must have a work plan as a staff member. Mm -hmm. 
And now we are on you filling a timesheet at the end of the week. Mm-hmm. A work plan as an individual. As an individual. Right. And that mm-hmm. work plan must be related to the Department of Work Plan. Aligned to the goals. Which yeah. itself must be drawing from the CIDP. Mm-hmm. So, and at the end of the week, you will fill a timesheet that says, what did you do for the week? So that we can see how is that related to your work plan. Mm. And by the way, if you don't fill a, a timesheet, you are not on the payroll. Now, we encountered, of course, that some staff did not have IT skills, and we have remedied that by actually paying Training. for them to get mm. IT skills. Right. We Right now, we are on more higher-level ideas, like mm-hmm. project management, mm-hmm. because government is hundreds and thousands of little projects. Mm-hmm. They're going to fix a road here, a mm-hmm. bridge there, mm-hmm. and we want people to have the right skills sure. to manage those projects right. uh, appropriately. Mm-hmm. Can I say that, you know, uh, there is never an issue. I mean, that would not be a fair representation. Mm-hmm. But I can say without fear of contradiction, mm-hmm. we are probably the best public service uh, sitting in this country today. How like many members does your mm-hmm. public service have? <laughs> well, probably because <laughs> no, that's sorry, me I saying, I think, it's, it's I think a, third party, <laughs> a third party, a third party must evaluate <laughs> that like you. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, I, I am... <laughs> <laughs> I was asking so how many, how, how many, many, how many we are 3,000, 3,179 mm-hmm. as of the uh, beginning of September, end of September, mm. right. half of whom are part time. Mm-hmm. So that, I mean, they don't work uh, the full time. Right. Uh, 62% are women. Oh, fantastic. Yes. Mm. And 30... The, the balance. 30, 30, uh, 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 I want to tell you something. 30, 37% <laughs> are youth. Intersex? Mm-hmm. 37, actually, I don't know how oh, no, many okay. intersex no, no, are. I'm, I'm pushing 37%. Yeah. And mm-hmm. the, the oldie, well, the, the people on the fifth floor. Mm-hmm. People on the fifth floor. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, I, Your I, comrades. I, my comrades. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we are twenty seven percent of the workforce. Okay. <laughs> now, tell us, if you, if you were to draw parallels with the president's uh, sort of big four agenda, what would yours be for um, like EPM? Uh, well, without why, why without you having to align to, yourself to with uh, no, because uh, like EPM will have its own sort of independent needs and very specific and unique needs. So as a county, when I say draw parallels, just in terms of giving you a framework to answer my question, you know why what, I'm asking that. Mm-hmm. You see. Unless we want to ch- change the citizen, mm-hmm. a political leader is elected on a platform. Right. Often spoken, sometimes written. Mm-hmm. And it is that, that, that is the contract between you and the citizen. We mm-hmm. are electing you to mm-hmm. go and do A, B, C, D, E, as you promised in your manifesto. Yep. Mm-hmm. So I would feel a bit uh, uncomfortable. If I have amending to, to it. amending it right. now that I'm in office in order to compare myself <laughs> you with another person. It. Can yeah. I ask right. a different Maybe. kind so of question? So Can I ask a different kind of question then? Yes. When we look at what it is that you've been able to do over time, health seems to jump out at one in terms of you know what you've been able to push and achieve. Is that something that has been deliberate? Um, for the health uh, of the citizens of Laikipia? Or is it something that has gone along with all the other work that you've been doing? It was... Item two mm. of my manifesto. Mm-hmm. And as I've explained it, my intention then and now, and my promise to the citizen, is to get everybody on a, a health insurance. Mm. And I even disclosed uh, in the manifesto mm. that I expected there would be, we, we say in the language indigent, I mean, there would be some households that are really, really poor and may not be able to afford mm-hmm. and that I expected and, uh, to pay. Uh, and, and in fact, we'll, I'm paying now for, for just over 14,000 households. Mm-hmm. Because this Mjali uh, platform, uh, platform yes. When the, when the CHV goes to the household, mm. she's taking not just, uh, you know, health type data. She's taking socioeconomic data that allows us to sort of estimate the income level of this family. So, uh, uh, UHC was number two. Number two. And my work around UHC started in my second week in office. Mm-hmm. Mm. By bringing partners on board, AMREF and others, and NHIF, and, and, and crafting this thing. 
So, uh, the, the, what are the other big things? I, yeah. I found you talking about innovation. Mm -hmm. Innovation is uh, point three. Mm. I mean, I have a target to create 30,000 jobs. How? By providing assistance, particularly to small and medium-sized businesses. Mm. Just last Friday and Thursday, for instance, we brought out the big leasing companies in Kenya, to Nyahururu mm. and to Nanyuki. In each place, they are engaged with four or five hundred small businesses to take them through the motions on how SMEs can benefit from leasing. Now, this is the sort of thing that we're doing every week. Mm -hmm. uh, bringing out uh, people like CABS, uh, you know, the Kenya Bureau of Standards, mm -hmm. people like Kipi, who, uh, you know, intellectual property protection, on weekly clinics into like Ipia so that they can support small businesses. And we ourselves investing mm. in small businesses. For instance, we've just invested in a startup as government uh, through the like Ipia County Development Authority. This startup is building a car. You know, a BJ50 is a, is a sort of a, a is trade the, name of it. A what? Is the model. A car. Mm. What's it called? BJ50. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, don't go there. No, so no, that's Moving swiftly on. Yes. Right. BJ50 <laughs> is a, a four-wheel tuk-tuk mm. uh -huh. that is being made in Nyahururu by this small business called Sagak Tech mm. and 15 other subcontractors. Right now, as we speak, they're assembling 14 units. And I just think it's the best thing uh, mm -hmm. to see happening. So yes. can I take you back? Sorry, can I just take you back one step? If you go back to health, for example, and obviously, I mean, from what you tell us, and we are going to assume that because you've told us is actually what is happening. It is. Yes, <laughs> you know. Um, we've, we've seen now this whole bungled government leasing of medical equipment has taken the country through us all sorts of a tailspin then where we have some equipment that doesn't work equ equipment that has not been serviced so even people want to go and access a dialysis machine for example they're not able to do that and we're spending billions as a government to actually lease this equipment to be mm -hmm. used at county level so now here you have this fantastic policy plan that is being rolled out in Laikipia, for example and then people going to access this medical care and then then they cannot using it as an example, mm -hmm. where you then go in and you have leased equipment for which has been spent billions of shillings on, and then the equipment for some reason is not working. How does that then impede the workflow of what you've been able to then establish in the country? I think and looking at other counties, for example, for where this could also be the case. I think on the managed equipment leasing program, we need to evaluate it and see it, both its positive and its <laughs> shortcomings. Mm. Now, in Nanyuki, mm. at the, um, uh, our county referral hospital, mm. uh, we have an amazing dialysis unit. Mm. And that dialysis unit is, is a beneficiary of the managed equipment lease mm -hmm. uh, program. So, I mean, I, I cannot begin to imagine the, 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 the suffering that has now been alleviated because the facility is available in an affordable manner at Nanyuki. Mm. On the not so positive, the analysis of what is needed mm. per facility was a bit poor. And that mm. is how we mm. ended up with sometimes with equipment in the places it should not be. Right. right. And that has the, been paid for. Which is a bit the, more the pricing. It's still being the paid pricing. for. The pricing. It's still being paid for, right. The pricing, uh. and, and we've had occasion to say this to the select committee. There's a select committee of the Senate mm. investigating this matter. Yeah. The pricing, we see that is a bit dodgy. <laughs> to say the least. To yeah. say the least. Uh. Because, for instance, we, as I was coming into office, we were paying 95 million shillings. My county was paying 95 million shillings per year. Uh -huh. Then a year later, we are told it's 200 million. <laughs> and there is nothing to support. Same, same equipment. Doesn't that kind of put, yeah. a, that kind so of put a bug in your ear? <laughs> Doesn't it? Doesn't it so put a we, bug we, in your ear we, to think we that we we're wrote, still paying we more? We did yeah. all kinds of things to the ministry. Show us why. Yeah. Yeah. Now, of course, another area there where really, in terms of public finance management, they are breaking the law. Mm. This money never actually moves From to the, the county area. revenue fund. Mm. No. It's a book entry. You're simply told that Yako is... Imekatwa. Imekatwa. Mm. 95 million <laughs> <in a tumelipa. laughs> So it's a bit... 
uh, is <laughs> quite <laughs> borderline. Mm. Uh, so, so you're saying you queried, you queried the ministry why this has moved up from nine. And governor said they did not know, and this was the case. What this did they the say? Case, mm. that they have said nothing. They have remained mute. So you don't know exactly why. We this, have no. You know, it has doubled. <laughs> it has doubled, and you have not given me any new equipment. You have not brought the CT scans that you promised. Mm -hmm. Have you not queried this? We have, is what mm -hmm. I'm explaining. We mm -hmm. have in writing. And the response mm -hmm. hasn't and, the res and they have remained mute. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that the Senate... Who's is the equivalent of sort of your Solicitor General at county level? Is a county, is a county attorney. Mm -hmm. If your suggestion is that uh, shouldn't we sue them, I mean, I think mm -hmm. that I is going perhaps... To say. Uh, that's an interesting idea. My yeah. next question, actually, is you tampering or you crossing over borders? You recently launched an airstrip. <laughs> 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 that doesn't belong where. <laughs> doesn't belong where it was launched. <laughs> were you invading the, <laughs> oh the space? Goodness. Were you just? Was it a friendly? Give us a background to this story, this actually. Uh, that's, that's this story. Is <laughs> like many like stories, it was yeah, such yeah, a hilarious story. Right? Uh -huh. It is such a hilarious story. Here is what it was. Mm. There's a new. Uh, I mean, there's an airline, a Kenyan airline, mm -hmm. that has launched a service mm -hmm. to Nanyuki and to Nyaururu, mm -hmm. among other destinations. Mm -hmm. yep. So they asked me, could I come along to, you know, they, they were coming on an introductory flight. Right. Mm -hmm. And of course, I was excited. I said, of course, I'll do so. Mm -hmm. So I called my colleague. Uh, Kememia, and mm -hmm. he told him this, and he was really happy with it. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, he sent me his CEC for transport. Right. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I called my colleague, uh, uh, Kenyanjui, governor of Nakuru, right. who, who uh, requested the speaker, and the speaker came. So, we are there, and it's really a nice thing. Oh, so, you thought. <laughs> where, where <laughs> that is what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, and this, 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 where yeah, was the event? At for, Nyauru, for, for, it for, is just... Uh, yeah, I'm going for those, there. For those who don't know the story. <laughs> you know? As you leave Nyahururu to go into Nyandarwa, mm -hmm. the general area called Suera, because there's a big farm famous there called Suera Flowers, yeah. the airstrip is there. Mm -hmm. So it is about, who knows, seven, eight kilometers from the CBD of Nyahururu. Mm -hmm. But you are in Nyandarwa County. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're in which county? Nyandarwa. Nyandarwa. Mm -hmm. no, just yeah, yeah. <laughs> making sure. <laughs> so, so we went there, and it was very nice. People mm -hmm. from Laikipia, people from Nyandarwa, people, people from the environment, uh -huh. which is Nyandarwa, Laikipia. <laughs> Nakuru. Nakuru. Which county? <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's a, Are you and, from Nyandarwa? No, no, I'm not. And the so, governor, anyway. and the, governor the, high, the most high-level uh, official from here was the governor of Laikipia. <laughs> no, no. And listen. then we had the speaker of Nakuru and the CEC. Was Nyandarwa, from Nyandarwa upset by any chance that you were launching an airstrip in their county? But you, you know, no, you know, you're, you're not, hear, hear me, hear me again. <laughs> we were not launching an airstrip. Right. And I want to come to that moment. We were not launching an airstrip. Uh -huh. To the service. They, they said an air service. Uh -huh. And this was like their maiden flight to say to people, we are starting this service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And anybody you talk to, this isn't an amazing thing. Because it makes transport for those of us who work in that part of the country to Nairobi, mm -hmm. far, uh, you know, realistic. Mm -hmm. So let me just uh, finish that. I come. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we go, we do this, and and we leave. And I don't quite catch up with the story until much later <laughs> that some guys are complaining that we opened an airstrip <laughs> in Nyandarwa. I'll, I'll come on, your guys. County. <laughs> come on, guys. This airstrip. I want you to tell me what were you doing in 1978. That's the year this year strip was built. Mm. It wasn't 1978. Born. I didn't build it. The and, and it is, it wasn't is born. The, the person complaining was not born. Uh -huh. And in any case, it's an airport. Mm. It is for all Kenyans Absolutely. to use. Please use Absolutely. it. <laughs> so and then I asked this question. When I heard the story and I was in Yahururu, mm. I asked this question. I mean, what's the matter with us? Mm. We ask that question quite often here. Yeah. What's the matter <laughs> with all of us? And maybe you I can mean, give us some we, insight. Do we, do we think so lowly of ourselves mm. that we don't believe we should be flying in aircraft? But I think it's... Why, why would you... <laughs> political would territory you, is always uh, territorial. <laughs> why would you sort of complain or try to malign... Mm -hmm. The idea that the people in Nyandarwa or the people in Laikipia or mm. the people in Nakuru should be flying. 
I mean, what, what, what's the matter with our own <laughs> self belief? You've very well. I've got to give that to you. <laughs> <laughs> what's the matter with us? <laughs> what's the problem? We yes. have in the in on the hot seat in the situation on this morning is uh, the governor of Laikipia County, the, uh, His Excellency Dorito Murethi. He's in the studio. He's been telling us the you know the work that he's been doing in Laikipia County. Let's take a look at what's happening on the roads, and we come back and go to Laikipia. Good morning. This is the situation on Spice FM. Mombasa Road this morning is actually quite the mess and um, Fika Road has now been labelled the largest parking space in East Africa. Unfortunately, people are not able to get where they need to get in time. Yes, we do have a major traffic situations on Mombasa Road today as well as Thika Road. Of course, the rain is not helping matters or rather the wet uh, conditions are not helping matters because that makes everybody slow down. That really is what happens. So it's crazy, it's messy, it's Mombasa Road, it's Thika Road this Monday morning. All right. Plus, it didn't help that there was an accident somewhere along Mombasa Road today. So that has slowed things down quite a notch. All right, let's see. Coming off of Ngong Road is not so much of an issue today as is coming out of Wayakiwe, not like what we see in other parts of the city. So the crazies haven't yet come out as such. Um, at about 8.30, let's see what happens in about an hour or so. But for now, if you're in it, you'll get out of it uh, soon enough. 0719 600 is the number to call. If you see an alternate route, do let us know. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Right. 94.4 Spice FM, Nairobi. Anything you want to say to the governor of Laikipia County, Dorito Moredi? He's on the hot seat in the Situation Room this morning. You can do that via our Twitter hashtag, The Situation Room, via our website, www.spicefm.co.ke. We're also live streaming on Facebook. This is the first and only 24-hour uh, audio-visual radio mm-hmm. station. You can actually tune in and uh, see the governor in the studio. We're live streaming on Facebook, Spice FM KE. Post your comments there or your questions. I'll be opening up the phone lines in a short while, 0719 012 600. Uh, Governor, is there an issue about boundaries between Laikipia and uh, Nyandaro? As I, <coughs> excuse me. As I walk into that, uh, allow me to suggest this about the planes and the airfields and so on. Eh? Mm-hmm. Uh, the purpose of leadership, <coughs> frankly, is to push boundaries and to inspire and to mm. try and get people to do things differently. Mm. To push boundaries? Yes. Okay. That's my view <laughs> of what... Geographical boundaries? Not no, no. geographical boundaries. Oh, okay. Boundaries Leader. in terms of boundaries what you're able to, to achieve. achieve. Thank you. Okay, there we go. So, so personally, I, uh, you will find that many of the things that I do as a leader are trying to get people to do things differently. Because mm-hmm. I think it's frankly crazy to do things in the same way we did yesterday and the day before and expect different results. It's a definition of insanity, as Absolutely. they say. Right? So, on to the question of boundaries. Mm. The... Uh, Laikipia and Nyandarwa have had a, a special relationship uh, going back to colonial times. Uh, in fact, I would say uh, Samburu, Laikipia, and Nyandarwa. Because remember, these used to be w- under one district commissioner. Mm-hmm. And for the longest time, the facilities, the, the, the town was Nyaururu. Mm-hmm. So for whatever reason, the when Nyandarwa was created as a district, the government, I mean, the government officers and facilities went to where the town was, and mm-hmm. the town was Nyaururu. Mm-hmm. So, growing up, or being even born, Nyaururu is a town in Laikipia, but Nyandarwa operates from? From Nyaururu. Nyaururu. From Nyaururu. <laughs> so, obviously, there will be facilities in Nyaururu that belong to Nyandarwa as a county. Mm-hmm. Buildings, for instance. Mm-hmm. Um, but since independence, Nyaururu has uh, citizens have always voted in Laikipia. Hmm. So, to me, I, uh, the way I've approached that matter is to say like this: If you go, say, to Gigiri here in uh, in, uh, in in Nairobi, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, the UN has a gigantic complex there. It doesn't mean that Nairobi belongs to to the UN. To the UN. 
yet, or if you go to the U.S. Embassy there, actually, the embassy is U.S. territory. Mm. Yes. But it doesn't mean that Nairobi belongs to the U.S. simply because there is U.S. There's territory. There's a facility there. Mm. Uh, yeah. And uh, finally, my own approach uh, to this matter, uh, because, uh, by the way, I was MP for West Laikipia before, mm. right. during Kibaki too. And my approach to this whole question has always been, why does it even matter? If we were very smart, we should persuade the Nairobi government to come and operate from Nyahururu. That's how there will be more business and more jobs. <laughs> so let everybody come to Nyahururu. What we all we need to do, which we are now doing actually, mm. not just in Nyahururu but in Nanyuki, mm -hmm. is that as counties, we need to plan that small metropolitan together so that services are being uh, uh, rationalized. For instance, if you are there near the airstrip, and all the space between the airstrip and Nyahururu town, mm. we cannot possibly expect you to wait for a fire engine that is coming mm. from Olkalao, mm -hmm. which is 60 kilometers away. The fire engine there in Nyahururu right there. should serve you. Right. And that's exactly what we do. Mm. And it's the same in Nanyuki. The people living in, uh, in uh, uh, Gatheri, mm. for instance, or on the Nyeri side, uh, Ishoga, mm. All those citizens are served with, for example, water and siwa <laughs> and <laughs> fire services. They are served from Nyanyuki. from Nyanyuki. And that's the rational, realistic thing to do. Are you this realistic with regards to resource distribution and uh, the, the different country, counties and boundaries? Are you this generous, I meant to say? Because well, you seem very generous with the services, but what about when it comes to providing services outside hope, your look, county look, and resource siwa, distribution? Siwa and water and even fire services, mm -hmm. they are not really for free as mm -hmm. such. Mm -hmm. Citizens pay mm -hmm. water and sewer, you pay quite directly. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So it's, it's not, uh, all I'm saying is that we should not be dogmatic. In the, there's in a the, boundary the, here. Uh, there's a boundary here, pragmatic. therefore we yes. must be pragmatic. <laughs> <laughs> if, there's, if there's a fire across no. the river, Go mm. and uh, sort it out. <laughs> Whilst we're discussing territories and so on, of course, Mount Kenya, I saw you walk into the studio and you were handed a copy of the Mount Kenya sub. I, I wondered <laughs> what, the, <laughs> what the subtext. <laughs> because, of course, uh, succession politics, especially Mount Kenya, mm -hmm. uh, leadership and succession politics is... Um, a matter of great interest for a lot of Kenyans, a lot of people from Central. And being a governor and being in leadership, we expect you to be in the know. So we're hoping you can tell us a little bit more about it. Well, I would have to say that uh, succession, mm -hmm. um, or particularly in political and leadership circles, uh, is always an issue. Sure. Uh, historically for <coughs> human beings, mm -hmm. um, succession y even incorporates Absolutely. We try to train corporates to do proper succession, succession management, planning, yeah. but uh, heaven knows that it is never really mm -hmm. seamless. Even in families, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> never seamless. Mm -hmm. Now, fortunately, we do live in a democracy. Mm -hmm. However flawed it may well be, but we do live in a democracy. Mm -hmm. And uh, my own expectation is that um, the, it is through electoral processes that we will arrive at uh, the new set of leadership of Kenya. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I also personally am not very, very keen that Kenya has continued uh, to mobilize politically around tribal lines. Mm. And I think that that is part of the... the, 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 the uh, no, I want to sort of, It's at the heart of the flaw. It's mm. the stuff. <coughs> yeah, what, what is the, mm. If you were to say, mm. what are the three really terrible things about Big challenges of, of, of Kenya political system mm -hmm. and mobilizing around tribal mm -hmm. lines mm -hmm. is, ma is at the heart of many of the problems <coughs> we face. Mm -hmm. Why do you say this? I say this because, uh, for instance, it hampers the fight against corruption. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, when I first became governor two years ago and I sacked some guys, mm -hmm. Uh, and, uh, you know, Kikuyu people came to me to say, you know, we thought you are Kikuyu governor, how dare you <laughs> suck our people? Yeah. And I said, then, uh, is it true then what they say that, you, uh, you know, are you, are you reinforcing a certain stereotype? Mm. <laughs> so, so they <laughs> backed off. <laughs> so they backed <laughs> off. A little. But the point is, that idea that simply because somebody is Kikuyu 
Therefore, we must rise up and defend them. Or simply because somebody is challenging, we challenges must rise up and defend them. Mm -hmm. Simply because somebody is Mijikenda, we must rise up. That is part of a big issue around uh, uh, corruption mm -hmm. or uh, the hum you know, the hampering, hampering corruption, the, uh, fight. the fight against corruption. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, number two, think about how to build this economy. We are a small market. 46 now, nearly 47 million people. We are a small market. You can't grow a global business by looking at your local tribe there. You can't. If you want to grow global business, you need to think not just of Kenya. You need to think about East Africa and you need to think about the continent of free trade area. That's, that's great. But yeah. I, I, I would like to ask, does this same thought filter into the minds of your colleagues? And I'm not just going to talk about like here, but across the country. Because sometimes we sit and we really really knock our heads against the wood and we try to figure out do we really understand when it comes to planning when it comes to politics when it comes to governance and policy are we looking at this country as a whole or are we still so insular in our thinking that we don't understand that leading a people is not just about getting them to like you or furthering that like of you because of where you're from but to actually talk about moving in terms of development from one step to the next if it was 62 percent today infiltrated by health infiltrated by positive health agendas and uh, in, in in your government will it be 87 next time to the hundred percent so now that we're talking about other things and actually raising the profile of this country whether it is nationally whether it is regionally whether it is globally do your other colleagues we've seen examples of your other colleagues at the governorship who understand this and that is clear in how, their gov in how their counties are performing. It is clear. But then we still seem to have others who have not actually grasped that concept and that notion and then applied it. You're being polite here. What, 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 I'm being very polite. I'm being very polite. You know, it's Monday morning. Politeness is a good thing. It, it, it's yeah. Monday morning. It rained a little it, bit. It so let's it. not uh, push the Monday no, blues so far. But I mean, a wonderful thing. The, <laughs> what we have debated here time and again is how it is counties led by their governors managed to generate such negative news mm. about all the time, time. and and it, it is about the very mandate they have and how they constantly seem to go against it every time mess it up across the I, board mm -hmm. oh, now no. the politeness is gone <laughs> well but we can put the politeness aside for a moment yeah i, I think i think that um, <clears throat> the you asked the question do my colleagues in political leadership know or believe in this I think the evidence would suggest that a large number may not hmm. believe in what I'm explaining to you. Um, but I do feel that there is a sufficient number of leaders, both in political class, in corporate class, and so on, hmm. who do take this view. So I feel that there is hope. If I look at the evolution of the Kenyan political space, hmm. just a few short years ago, we, we couldn't have this conversation. Yeah, special branch should be waiting outside. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just a few short years ago, mm. when we were all grown up and working. Yep. Right. Um, a few short years ago, nobody, I mean, 99% of the people had never seen the constitution of Kenya. <clears throat> mm. It was referred to by all these lawyers, but, but citizens never. had never really seen it. <laughs> now, it's the stuff we debate all the time in, in various social places. Mm. Um, if I look at a short 10 years ago, a short 10 years ago, many towns in northern Kenya in many spaces had never seen a kilometer of tarmac. Mm. That's a few 10 years ago, a short 10 years ago. Mm. These things have become possible because of devolution. Now, do we have challenges with it? Of course we do. But I tell you, it is the best thing, <coughs> it is the best decision that Kenyans made for themselves. The kind of things we are talking about uh, uh, that we are achieving in Laikipia. I bet you, to various levels of success, mm. you will hear the same stories in other counties. For instance, this, this, this financial year, we will probably gravel 800 kilometers of roads. Mm. 10 years, <laughs> 15 years, <coughs> during the time of unitary system, yeah. We never achieved that kind of thing. And so, with the money, year, right, so with the money that has been provided, national budget trickle down to county, the money that is available. So in truth, it is possible to have development projects started, continuing, completed 
with the money that has been allocated at county level, it is possible for us to actually see these things in our lifetime in yeah. a reality actually being completed? I yes, know it I, is. I know I am asking. Yes, it is. Okay. So in instances where we say it is not, where we have leaders such as yourself telling us that it cannot, it has not been completed, the budget halfway, ikakatika, it was not enough for us to be able to then finish. What then are we supposed to believe? The same people who you've told us bear the same vision, hold the same belief. But, but halfway, you, you, halfway you, through, you, money finished. If you go there, I don't, know, I don't know how to answer you. You see, even in the private sector, <laughs> even in the private sector, companies in the same sector, mm. some are profitable, <laughs> some are not, not profitable. Yeah. So it's a function of the way the management of that team is working. It's a leadership. The leadership. I think. I think. Uh -huh. What, what would be really interesting mm. is how do we then encourage Kenyans to have perhaps a, a different template mm. of evaluating leadership performance or even and that's why we are uh, saying let's template. get out let's get out of uh, tribal mobilization or even a different template of how they vote in these leaders but that's what i'm saying mm, mm. Yeah, because after all we uh, evaluate uh, uh, you, vote. Where we you evaluate you vote mm. because you have evaluated mm. whether you you want to believe it or not mm. you are making a choice mm -hmm. which implies Hopefully, you thought about it a little, and then you said it is her and not her. No, that's, exactly. That's very forward mm. thinking. And even as we create this template of uh, leadership qualities that we want, I doubt we'll be able to shake off the tribal aspect, <clears throat> in all honesty. <clears throat> so I want to go back to my why, question. Why, why would because you we've doubt managed that? to circumvent it with a lot of diplomacy. But I why, still why, would you, why would you doubt <laughs> that we can surmount uh, all this tribalism? I, I think, uh, I mean, it's something I've looked into from a number of angles, whether political, legal, religious, spiritual, national. But until we form a, a Kenyan identity that we have more of a, an affinity to and feel we belong to before our tribe, mm -hmm. we're not going to get there. So it's a multi pronged approach. It's going to take a while. And until our leaders actually stop dividing us tribally and stop using it and politicizing it and we can actually uh, celebrate the ethnic diversity but it's a process you, and I think know at what? the moment you know what as we go back to your question mm. look at what happened the other day mm -hmm. when uh, Kipchoge was trying to go mm -hmm. under, mm -hmm. under two hours mm -hmm. and the whole country stopped sure. and, and we all <laughs> sat around television sharing sure. uh, you know mm -hmm. uh, in fact my own my own now contribution to the whole thing mm. is that now uh, I'm trying to to go uh, to do 10 kilometers. Get out of here. <laughs> Just listen no, to no, me. <laughs> 10 kilometers uh -huh. under an hour. I mean, I can't. Okay. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> choggy, obviously. No, no, no human is limited. <laughs> yes. So, so you'll do a 59. <laughs> <laughs> if I if I make it in one hour. Uh -huh. Yes. And I, I mean, I'm up to uh, eight kilometers. Fantastic. Yeah, Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. So uh -huh. it's look. I really think we have a lot of reason. To be positive about where we are. It's mm -hmm. not to say that everything is working correctly. Mm -hmm. But I do believe, honestly, mm -hmm. that we have a lot of reason to be positive and, about and, where we and, are and, as a nation. But I and think the leaders have also failed to see the unique opportunities upon which you Kenyans can be unified and have constantly gone back to tribe as a unifying factor. Mm -hmm. And that this is a brilliant example of what you've, uh, of, that you've given just now on a platform upon which Kenyans can be unified because then with that unity, there's so much more that you can do. But mm -hmm. I think leaders have failed again and again to use those other unique opportunities and have always relied on tribe. Your Excellency, I actually disagree with my colleagues on this particular matter <laughs> completely. And I always do. Mm. Uh, my assertion is we do we actually do not have a tribal problem in this country. It's mm -hmm. not a problem. It's been made into a problem. A challenge. But the ethnic right. diversity exists. If we ignore it, it will surface to the top at a later date. I, 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 I don't even think there's a we different ignore approach. It. We do. We I do. want us to open the phone line so when we come back out of this short break as the governor takes a sip of water. Zero seven one nine zero one two six hundred at zero seven one nine zero one two six hundred. Also, I'll read some of your comments that you are posting on Facebook, Spice of MKE. The hash Tag on Twitter, the Situation Room. It's ten minutes to nine. Good morning. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. Ninety-four point four Spice FM, Nairobi. So my my approach to this tribal problem, as we call it, is to accept that we're a multi-ethnic democracy. And there's no harm in that. And the minute we espouse that and start tweaking our democracy and the framework through which we govern, 
with that in mind, then we start to deal with the problem or at least to make it not a problem. Now, having said that, and I'm not countering what you're saying, this is my personal opinion as to the approach we should take. We centuries of history and uh, so social context and, and differences. We must remember that our borders were divided uh, irregardless of sort of historical context and social differences and so on. You, you have Maasai in Kenya and you have Maasai in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. And these tribes had come together. I'm not an anthropologist, but there's a good reason as to why they had come together over the centuries. Now, we can't do away with that altogether. The fact that it's been politicized and used as a tool and been almost weaponized against the people of Kenya, that's another conversation altogether. But having said that, I want to come back to this issue of Kikuyu leadership and succession or Mount <laughs> Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know, of course, as a national leader, it, it's not something you want to be seen to be propagating, this idea of tribalism. And that's why I want to give it a foundation of it is not, it is the reality on the ground in that we do vote in tribal blocks. This is the, the, the nature of the democracy we have. And you're very aware of, of that as a the politician. Okay. okay. <laughs> I mean, look, I, 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 I please, please so let me, let me just jump to, in for I, a moment. I want to make sure the audience's uh, curiosity is satisfied here. Let, let me jump mm. in at a moment. I am governor of Laikipia, mm -hmm. independently elected, mm -hmm. against uh, oh Lord, gigantic but, but, but uh, jubilee onslaught. Mm. So you're not eyeing, for instance, the seat of Mount Kenya leadership? Not even eyeing, you're not step involved step. in any... Step by step. <laughs> step by step, Jerry. Step, step by step. So he so, started by, first of all, laying the ground. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. I am elected independently. Mm -hmm. I am elected in Laikipia. Mm -hmm. I have said to you, 34, 32 mm -hmm. tribes of Kenya live in Laikipia. Mm -hmm. I was not elected by Kikuyu. I was elected by Kikuyu, by Samburu, by Maasai, by Turkana, by Kisi, by Meru. I was elected by 32 different tribes mm. that live in Laikipia. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Now, what is the responsible political leadership point or action mm. is to say, for instance, in my public service, is it representative of the people who work here, who live here? Because I refuse to believe, and I know it is factually not correct, mm. that only some people are educated or can do whatever. Everybody can play and does play a role. And that is mm -hmm. exactly what we've done. A deliberate thing. And remember mm -hmm. what I told you when I first started, that one of my first jo uh, actions was actually to fire the public service board. Mm -hmm. Because they said to them, you've been sitting here for four or five years <coughs> as professionals. Why don't I see a deliberate effort to ensure that every Kenyan who lives, uh, the tribes of Kenya who live in Laikipia, feel that they are represented in the seat of power? Inclusivity. Inclusivity. Absolutely. So, mm. it's not to say that we, you know, we don't have tribes. Of course we have tribes. Absolutely. And, and we have had decades and decades of, polit of, of tribal mobilization, mm -hmm. but it is to say there is an opportunity for us to... You're, you're right. taking very long to answer Sorry. that question. <laughs> get, get to answering that question. No, no, it's fine. I, I was because enjoying. I was enjoying. If Jerry is asking <laughs> if, if she can vote for me <laughs> as a sort of titular Mount Kenya leader, yes, please do. No, I, wa I, I want not us seen to, to have... be tribal. <laughs> you, so long as we are not seen to be tribal. I but you came, to together, you came together mm. as, as leaders from Mount Kenya region. Right, and we've seen you as governors from from the region. You, you we have together. an economic block as a matter of fact. The economic block, like yeah. economic, yes. or is there a political caucus there as well? It is an economic block, mm -hmm. but it has uh, some political side to it. There is no economic process that doesn't have <laughs> politics. <right? laughs> so, I tell so, you, so we we go into the politics of it. All right. No, no, we actually have tried very much to play down the political angle of the Central Kenya Economic Bloc for the reason that uh, the, our primary uh, interest right now mm. is how that bloc uh, can, how that, the market of that bloc can propel the small businesses within the bloc. Also, I'll be very honest, and it's important, you know, if we're going to actually get over the problem or the tribal problem, because I believe in uh, ethnic diversity and it doesn't need to be a problem. But if we're not honest about the conversations we have, and when you talk about playing down certain uh, tribal allegiances or meetings or caucuses, the very reason for that is because any time Kikuyus do meet as a caucus, there's an issue.
Am I uh, on the wrong? No, no. The, 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 there's the, an the, issue. The, there's the, backlash from other communities nationally. There's, there's assassination s- Supposed chest thumping. <laughs> so there's no communication even, you know, to come up with collective bargaining power, whether economically, politically, as a block, it becomes very difficult and things are hidden. No, and this is the conversation Kikuyus, I'm trying to bring Kikuyus, out. Kikuyus, the truth be told, mm-hmm. um, in my view, have been verified a little, or a lot, that you, Kikuyus, have... Uh, commanded power mm. both politically and economically mm-hmm. uh, and therefore when we hear that two of you are meeting mm. we, we get a bit uh, suspicious right. and I think that Kikuyu leadership has to manage that perception mm-hmm. why uh, do you think it's a perception and not a representation of reality well it is a perception because the the perhaps just as many Kikuyus as other Kenyans in other tribes um, have not had a role either in the in the wielding of power or in the wielding of economic uh, economic more Kikuyus might. More than mm-hmm. any other tribe. Yeah. So mm-hmm. so that Kikuyus are poor, uh, or more many Kikuyus are poor. Kikuyus are ju- in just like in, mm-hmm. yeah. So it's it's not correct to sort of assume it is every Kikuyu <coughs> simply because they are Kikuyu. You see, visual representation doesn't necessarily have to represent the whole truth. This is what we are saying. Mm. If you, for instance, look at, say, material well-being or wealth, as we call it, and you look at the indigenous communities in this country, the one community that represents the most are the Kikuyu. Mm. Asians now, I, as well. There's they uh, certain uh, narratives uh, that are amplified. Asians as well. Uh, if you look at them or, or the Jewish community, <laughs> there's certain communities that are not spoken about. No, I premised it on, <laughs> I Absolutely. Premised it on mm. the native communities that we have. African Indians are native here now. No, they're no, a no, tribe. No, no, they're no, considered no, well. Kikuyus aren't then. Dorobo, we, are, we are speaking we the truth out. here. So mm-hmm. we're saying the black. Yes, no, but that's what I am <laughs> saying. All right. So. right. Native are the people everybody else found here. Mm-hmm. Okay. To put it simply, now they represent that. Now what isn't spoken of is the phenomenal effort that they have made individually and as a community to present what we now see. It didn't happen overnight. Or the adversity that they faced, or their proximity to the, the CBD, the, the or adver- their interaction the all that with is the Muslim, part and or the fact that they received their title these so earliest could is actually leverage reality, their land CT. for business. No, to you. For me, it's reality. And I'm saying there's nothing wrong with it. What needs to be managed is not the reality, it's the perception. I'm sorry, uh, Your Excellency, we've dragged you into a tribal <laughs> Actually, Your Excellency, it isn't a tribal discussion. We said we wanted to talk bluntly about it, mm. and I am actually doing precisely that. We are talking bluntly about it. We've but had the we governor of Laikipia County please. for the past yeah. one hour. We've had the governor of Laikipia County for the past one hour. We're going to retain you here for a bit, uh, <laughs> Your Excellency, because we need to talk about succession politics as well. And I've been telling people to post in their comments, and they have posted those, so many comments and questions, and also people have been calling. In fact, I've just not been picking calls, but I'll be picking them. Good morning. It's 9 o'clock. We've got to go into that. Uh, Shimura, we have to talk about, you know, this is, <laughs> this is what really happening in Mount Kenya. that topic. <laughs> 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 But, but before Look, we, yeah, before I we get there, uh-huh. I think I'm going to be picking up a couple of calls. And, uh, <laughs> you know, because it's important that you had also posted this to your constituents and they have some questions and concerns. Let me read something here from Kibet Kipkosge, who says, I'm borrowing a lot from Honorable Derito. I have worked partly in Laikipia West, Ol Moran, Mwenje, and Tebeleko, close to Chuo Secondary School. Moshimua, water in this area, kindly. You guys need to sink boreholes, replica of Cherumbo and Ol Moran Parish water pumps. Dams are not uh, healthy for use, both livestock and human beings. I'm also emphasizing satellite dispensaries across the county to minimize long travels. Finally, champion for more inroads to help in matters of security. Indeed. Feedback from your constituents Absolutely. there. You know, yeah. He's saying, yeah. yes, you're doing a lot of work, but there's still all these areas that you uh, need to, to, to attend to. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Kibet, I hope you, you know that uh, we have three dams on the boil right now, uh, including quite close to Churo. Uh, and as I agree with you, we do need to do more on water and roads. The road from Sipiri going to Almoran uh, is under tarmac, uh, and we're also going to be doing some stuff around Almoran. Uh, this year, I would expect about four boreholes, and that's what I have in the budget, and three dams for, for that neighborhood. And if we're able to raise more monies, for instance, from the Water Sector Trust Fund, we'll probably do more. How much do the dams cost? <laughs> Just putting uh, it out there. <laughs> <laughs> differently, differently. <laughs> Actually, the, the, the technical one to use <laughs> is water pumps. Right. Uh, and the anywhere from 10 to 20 million 
shillings, uh, depending on what it is and the size of it. Mm. Yeah. And it covers, it, it, it provides yeah. a service for what sort of population? Um, like take Wangwashi, for instance. Wangwashi sits on 70 acres of land mm. and about 300 farmers are irrigating using it. Part of what Kibet is saying about the usability of these dams, uh, and we are improving the design now, e including on the ones that we found, is that you see, you, you create a water pan, so the animals, the, uh, everybody, everybody uses. uses. So what we are improving is, for instance, to make uh, watering troughs for both uh, domestic animals and wildlife mm. on the downside of the, of the water pan so that they don't have to basically swim in order to... To, to, access take, to access the water. Another question uh, yeah. here from uh, Lydia. Lydia, good morning. Uh, good morning um, to Spice FM and your guest, Dirito Muriti, Governor. Good morning. Thank you for your good. Uh, good morning. Thank you for your good work. Mm. I would also like to say that the five milling flow companies are to be closed down because of aflatoxin. Uh, these cabs officers who discover it should give advice, not close down companies. Companies are done by honest, hard workers. So help them to survive, to create employment. By If they know how to discover aflatoxin, they should also know how to teach you not to get aflatoxin in the flower. Sorry, Lydia, I, I Lydia sorry yes. to interrupt. Are these yes. five companies in Lakeipia? Or you're saying nationally? Not necessarily, just national. Nationally, nationally yeah. Okay. Yes, because I don't know if aflatoxin was, if I was a business person and aflatoxin is in my flower, I would try to kill them by, um, uh, you know, this um, uh, by putting it under the, um, uh, what you call it, the um, micro, micro oven, he just to see whether it can die. So basically, but Lydia, what you're saying is that cabs, <laughs> cabs should, what, it's your comment here, that cabs should not be closing down these companies. You should be advising yeah, them on how to manage this. Be. Well, they, let, let me, they, if, let yeah. me, uh, Lydia, uh, here is a Lykipia solution. Mm. Well, what I'm doing in Lykipia, with, with the help of some monies from the European Union, is to build a drying and storage facility because aflatoxins develop because the maize is not the right moisture when it goes into storage. Mm. So the, the immediate solution is to ensure that across the, the value chain, the way the grain is flowing, it is actually at the right moisture. And uh, my own practical solution in Lykipia is to build uh, some free a new uh, big uh, grain storage and to provide dryers so that as the main is, maize is coming off the farms, yep. it is dry to the right moisture content. Um, and uh, But look, I, I, I agree with you that uh, solution is not always really to close facilities, mm -hmm. is to improve the way the value chain is working. All right. So let's go to Mombasa Blackwater. Hello, good morning. Doing all right. Here's Randy Catherine. I was, oh, sorry? What's happening to your line, Blackwater? It's uh, breaking up. Cats and dogs. All right, oh, please. it's raining oh, it's cats raining. and dogs in Mombasa. Yeah. In Mombasa. Voila. Yeah, so okay. Okay. Actually, I wanted to comment on this. Uh, this tribal issue, we all like, we don't see what's really going on. All right? And we all know the truth. Common at all. Blackwater, please call again. Uh, your line is you're really breaking While up. While he's calling back, let's mm. come back to my question. Sorry. <laughs> Your Excellency. <laughs> Look, let, let, Jerry, <laughs> Jerry he, let me try and put this to bed. Are people jostling mm. to emerge as a leader in mm -hmm. Mount Kenya? Obviously, they are. Mm -hmm. Now, the, I think that the smoke will not clear until after the electoral process mm -hmm. or closer to the electoral process. So are we assuming uh, Uhuru's uh, leadership will end uh, when his term ends as president? Because if you look at uh, Western, let's say, or Nyanza, they don't necessarily have political elected political positions, but they're still leaders of those voting blocs. If what, do you mean exactly? what do you mean exactly? What do you mean? If you look at somebody election? like Raila, Raila is not a, a president. He's not a, <laughs> an MP. He he's doesn't a party have leader. A, an, an elected position per se. I think I think then, Jerry, if you if uh, if you go look in that direction, mm. uh, you'd have to say, uh, look at the late Nelson Mandela mm. or or Mahatma Gandhi. I mean, influence. Mm. Certain personalities have 
immense influence that globally the election, uh, you know way selection. beyond election selection whatever mm-hmm. and who do i think you see i think that? Mm-hmm. i think certainly mm-hmm. uhuru mm-hmm. will play that role i, I would him. imagine almost inevitably mm-hmm. that even after his even term. after his right. term okay so i think that the if i understood your point is more who will be who will, who, who will be the, the who, elected one? Who will be the face? Who will be the face mm-hmm. of politics mm-hmm. or political leadership in 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 Mount Kenya? Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, uh, I'm, you I'm certain that uh, well, there are many personalities, including Sometimes. myself, who right. are interested. Will you be running for a second term? I will be governor? running for a second term as no, governor. Just in making Nakipia. sure you're not a presidential <laughs> candidate. <laughs> 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 so, so who do you see? These are the names I want to hear. Well, I um, don't know. I mean, the <laughs> same names that you in the no, media no, no, have. No, no, I don't you. Have, uh, p- <laughs> the name that I know is Derito Moraidi. <laughs> Governor, you can see yourself in that corner, right? You can see. But can't you, 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 Eric? Can you? Can, you can see. You can see how far you've been pushed, Jerry. <laughs> really right. She right. has. Right. has really right. 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 So I think we leave it there. Mm-hmm. That yes, there is jostling. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that people will be looking, for example, amongst governors, mm-hmm. you know, people will be looking at various parameters, performance mm-hmm. and what have you, mm-hmm. um, to, to, as they cast their lot. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, there are also second time governors who, yes. yeah, uh, there are people, say, who at the moment at cabinet level, mm-hmm. again, also interested in this matter. So, um, I think let's the, let the candidates uh, or the the. But the, there's a caucus. Would there's you, would you then Kenya say Governor's that caucus. your county as um, uh, uh, and what it represents in terms of the multiplicity of ethnicity? Would you say that it gives you an advantage as presenting yourself as a national leader? Uh, well, I certainly hope so, um, because uh, here is here is. Uh, Leadership and politics, it, again, a personal view, mm-hmm. leadership and politics are not exactly the same thing. Mm-hmm. Every leader requires politics because politics is about a certain process. Mm-hmm. But not every, but not every would-be politician is a leader. Right. So if you were to ask me of myself, what do I bring to the table? What difference do I make when I come to the table? Mm-hmm. I think I have shown clearly that I can manage a, a multi-ethnic uh, unit mm-hmm. and manage it well. Mm-hmm. I think I have shown that I can bring professionalism to the job and do so mm-hmm. uh, with relish and with with effectiveness. Economic so, growth. So the uh, simple response. Eight point six percent. So the simple response. Eight point six percent. Ahead of the national, is it being felt? Vitu ni tafauti on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, the uh, let, <laughs> let's get a comment from yeah. Rono from Eldoret. Good morning, Rono. Good morning, Eric and Mwashimiwa uh, and the and panel. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, uh, two things. Mwashimiwa, uh, thank you for availing yourself. Yes, One, I would want to ask Njeri to, to, to pick on the thread he had earlier on mm-hmm. about entrepreneurship and uh, married with the uh, issue politics. Mm-hmm. The situation we have obtaining now is, is simply where someone is promoting a narrative that, uh, of course, works for his own interest. There is nothing wrong with us being tribal. I mean, it's it's it's, it's natural. You have to be born from uh, from somewhere. Mm-hmm. But uh, having said that, nobody marries his own sister. If it was a question of appreciating the people you only know, mm-hmm. uh, nature by it, it itself uh, demands diversity. There should be a cross pollination of ideas, genetics, name it, anything. Mm. The challenge we have on uh, uh, promoting entrepreneurship is that we forget it is a mindset. It's not something you are going to train on. Mm. You either <laughs> believe you are relevant to society and you have something to offer us, we'll pay you as uh, 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 as, a by, as a byproduct. Mm-hmm. The, 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 the first point is you have something to offer us as society, be, be it uh, a trader, uh, an artisanship, Mwalimu uh, uh, City on the other end, you know. <laughs> <laughs> 
and so it 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 goes it goes the same way with leadership. It's the same as leadership. What what uh, the, uh, His Excellency has done in uh, the multi ethnic uh, constituency he has. Mm. Um, it actually appreciate that he cannot bank on his own. Mm. His own will never uh, do him anything. He already has it, you know. If, if it's a question of uh, the cultural uh, uh, benefit, it's there. Mm. You need a way of cultivating an appreciation of purpose of within others. the spectrum. Thank you, Rono. Zero seven one nine zero one two six hundred. That's the number to call in. You can call in and ask a question or comment to contribute to the conversation that we're having in the studio. On the hot seat this morning is the Lake Keeper Governor, Honourable uh, Enderito Murevi. Back to can politics. I, can I extend an invitation mm. to Njeri, mm. <laughs> but also to all of you? Yes. To uh, Rumuruti on the tenth and eleventh of of December mm -hmm. to witness the Lake Keeper Indigenous Technology Fair. Indigenous. Indigenous technology fair. This is what? Homegrown. This is homegrown. Mm -hmm. And I want to relate to what Ronno is saying, entrepreneurship and issue-based politics. Now, we are often talking about value addition, blah, blah, blah. Uh, he will be absolutely amazed at the technologies the peoples of Lake Ipia have. For instance, their use of iron. If you look at the Maasai in Laikipia, the Samburu, the Pokot, the Kikuyu, they even know where the iron ore is, and they have recently showed us. Mm -hmm. So the conversation we're having with them, in next, in, uh, just now in February, we'll be having a mining conference, is that, okay, since you already know how to make spears and swords out of iron, why don't we take it a step further? Mm. So that you're making <coughs> things out of this iron, Mm -hmm. For the modern, uh, uh, for the modern uh, economy, modern consumer. Mm. Um, if you look at the Maasai, the Trukana, the Kikuyu, they know how to preserve meat. The Trukana is called Rokori, mm -hmm. the Kikuyu is called Rokori. Mm -hmm. You 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 preserve meat in honey, mm -hmm. and it has a shelf life of five years. This is built on. It's not biltong. Nerokoli. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> biltong is, uh, dried. is dried meat. It's dried, you know. <laughs> this is meat oh. preserved in honey. Mm -hmm. And, and we're not working. Regularly. Uh, okay. No, no, you, you preserve, you put it in honey, you mm -hmm. put it in a, in a you jar. Mm -hmm. You immerse it. Mm -hmm. You immerse it in honey, you right. put it in a jar, and it will last It'll for last five, five years. Five years. All right, you know? Okay. Which, that is what we want to see in a supermarket. Mm -hmm. you know, we're answering this question. Mm -hmm. Today you go to the supermarket and you buy water in a bottle. Mm -hmm. Why are we not finding uji in a bottle? In the bottle in the supermarket, ready to drink mm -hmm. uji. Red, yes, and those are the questions we'll be answering mm -hmm. in the Lakeipia Indigenous Technology Fair. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, and it's not. Uh, we already have two hundred and twenty companies from Lakeipia mm -hmm. in this program of entrepreneurship. <coughs> <coughs> And our role as government, as I said, is to bring people like Kenya Bureau of Standards to come and certify these products so that they can go for mass production. Mm -hmm. right. Is to bring the Kenya uh, Industrial Property Institute to mm -hmm. ensure that the intellectual property of these folks is protected. It's protected. Mm -hmm. Is to bring our own enterprise fund mm -hmm. to lend them money. Mm -hmm. sure. Is to bring our own, uh, like Investors. APR Development Authority, mm -hmm. to invest in them, and so on and so on. Um, is to bring other partners like Kemadi University, mm -hmm. who provide engineering. You see, in any production process, you require some engineering. But an SME may not be able to hire an engineer right off. Sure. Mm -hmm. So we bring engineers from Kemadi mm -hmm. and so on and so on. When so, you talk about the 200 SMEs, yeah. what's the size of these SMEs, the average size, in oh, terms of uh, maybe revenue or... Maybe number people, of people employed? Number of people, mm -hmm. I would say 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they range from, from the guy I was telling you, Jogu, who is making uh, with his colleagues, they're making a car. Mm. Yeah. Another group uh, are making uh, uh, drones. There are Wamoyo, who is making uh, insecticide to, 
to deal with fall armyworm. Are hmm. you investing? You because this is how China got its entrepreneurs becoming multi billionaires globally. Yes. The government actually invested in private business. Of course, some would argue that's not quite the capitalist root of the economic model that we have. But are you, as a as a government, a, a local government, are you investing in these businesses? Are you putting money into it? Not just training and facilities and so on. Are you actually yes, putting money into yes. it and yes. owning owning parts owning of it? shares oh, equity absolutely. into it? Okay, yeah. excellent. Yeah. Through what vehicle? Like your County <coughs> Development Authority. So, what? Tell us about that. The County Development Authority. Well, it's uh, it's uh, it's um, you know a body corporate created by statute. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know can sue and be sold, sued, can hold mm-hmm. property, mm-hmm. has his own balance sheet, and and actually has a very market uh, oriented board mm-hmm. uh, chaired by James Moria, the CEO of Centum. Right, uh, and his colleagues, um, you know, Abbas and Daweru, another uh, top players. So, how does it get its money? So, so you allocate. Uh, we we we, inv- we put money in it, mm-hmm. and of course, it raises money by turning a profit uh, from the entities that is going is investing in. Uh, also, uh, is is going to go to market <coughs> to raise other monies, mm-hmm. not just what uh, government is able to invest in them. Okay. I, I hear you and you talk about the different, you know, agendas and initi- initiatives that are being established in county. And it's clear that you obviously have a knowledge of some of these things. I'm mean, not going to ask you what the background of your training is, but it's obvious that, you know, you are, <coughs> excuse me, versed in some of these things. And we've had this conversation before about the importance then of leaders at this level to have, you know, a, a, measure of training or measure of expertise or be a technocrat at some level to be able to then understand the needs, development needs of a county. Because basically that's what you're asked to do. Go and push the development agenda per county as the governor, for example. I, do you think it's necessary then for somebody at that level or even lower to have at least a certain level of education to be able to get the job done, to hone in some you know, uh, level of expertise to get the job done, to have some understanding of what needs to happen or mm-hmm. what mm-hmm. the environment would be to then be able to then would, go forward. I would and go more that. with, the, with uh, I mean, education, of course, yes. but I think it's actually yeah. some uh, experience in mm. certain things. In fields, yeah. In certain fields. Yes. The... You know, it is true. I have a background in supporting small business, mm. in creating the right conditions for Africa's financial markets to work. So, for instance, the reason we were the first county to do leasing on our own, because we just leased, uh, you know, road equipment not mm. so long ago, mm. is because I know the leasing product. And I know it now from a technical point of view. Right. Uh, you know, when I was working in IFC and it was part of my job to create the correct uh, thing. Mm. The reason you've seen us in Nakuru in the news recently uh, with uh, IFC, mm-hmm. who have been helping us with um, uh, low-cost housing, again, I have a fairly technical knowledge about uh, our attempt to create mortgage markets mm. uh, in this economy and other economies on the continent. Mm-hmm. So I do feel that experience has made it far more easier for me at a personal level mm. to conceptualize and execute certain things. The reforms that I've done in the public service uh, from recognizing, you know, we have spot awards mm-hmm. to recognize staff who, who do extraordinary things uh, every quarter. The, uh, you know, training that I'm able to bring to the public service, uh, the HR systems that I'm putting in place. I mean, all those have something to do with my corporate experience. So mm. for me, it has worked. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think that the, the leadership, you will not be an expert in everything. So I think the bigger quality in leadership is recognizing what you know, but most importantly, what you don't know and finding people who know. To come around you to and then come work around with and, and, you and, and, and on, on that. Exactly. Mm. As we speak of leadership and uh, public uh, finance management, one of the constant accusations of counties is their inability to absorb some of the funds they're being um, dispersed, that they're getting from national government. Have you found this to be a hurdle when it comes to dealing with your county, whereby you're having to return funds and as a result uh, your budget, of course, is cut the following year. So what a lot of counties have been doing is sending people on benchmarking trips and so on to try and absorb these funds because of the lack of the capacity to actually absorb the fund for sustainable uh, development and growth for the county. Uh, Three quick points to make. Mm -hmm. Firstly, actually counties are doing better 
the national government in absorption in development budget absorption <laughs> right. that's number one point to remember mm -hmm. however both levels of government could do better the way i've gone about it myself is to make uh, budget absorption a performance matrix for mm -hmm. the my CEC or mm -hmm. county minister, but they're called mm -hmm. county executives mm -hmm. and the chief officers. Mm -hmm. So in their performance appraisal, how much budget you are absorbing in a timely manner is actually part but of your... But does that not then encourage them to go on these benchmarking trips uh, just no, to ensure that the money has uh, been used? Uh, no, no, no. It, 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 <laughs> it, it encourages them... that there's a problem with benchmarking. It encourages them. Mm -hmm. For instance, if you go to Laikipia <laughs> now, every department... Uh, and the budgets were very delayed because of the issues between mm. Senate and Assembly, mm. you'll find that every department has a procurement plan in place. Mm. Because we also need to know the procurement plan so we can plan cash flow. Mm -hmm. Is it... So, yes, there has been an issue. The issue uh, is both the procurement processes, or do you do them on time? Mm. Mm. But also... Uh, cash flow releases from the treasury because even treasury does not get all its money mm. in one go at the beginning sure. of the year. Mm. So there's a bit of management you have to do mm -hmm. uh, in order to ensure that uh, you do absorb uh, your budget uh, on time. Your money comes in. I yeah. want to ask a couple of questions, uh, of course, as we go into national politics as well. Number one, we saw the release of the census results last week. And, of course, there was, it was met by with hue and cry from some quarters and a celebration from other quarters. What's the situation in Lake Uh 818,000 people. Mm -hmm. Uh, that number conforms very much with our <laughs> oh, estimates in the sense royal. You know, you, so you're you happy estimate. With the results. I, I mean, look, <laughs> I'm, I'm a person uh, who uses numbers mm. uh, as part of my input into mm. decision making. And I would mm. encourage all leaders the, to do, the so. do the same. The reason I throw that in is because, of course, you had two two sets of people, some who are happy and, those uh, that and are some not are happy. who came out all guns blazing. <laughs> Northeastern, of course, were very disgruntled yeah. by the results. People were lost. And and they, they, <laughs> they lost 200,000. <laughs> no, uh, well, look, uh, the, the numbers were encouraged <laughs> the last time round. Mm. Some numbers were encouraged. Mm. And you see, there's all usually a relationship between numbers. Mm. So, for instance, uh, how would you have a population of one million people mm. and only 150,000 voters. <laughs> <laughs> how, how is that? <laughs> so the numbers were encouraged in a certain way because uh -huh. people, uh, uh, these numbers are encouraged. Input. It's very uh, diplomatic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, 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 they are, these numbers uh -huh. are used for certain processes, including or particular resource allocation, mm -hmm. and that's why people behave in, in a certain way. Absolutely. Uh, uh, the, the Kenya Bureau of Statistics mm -hmm. did a far superior job this year, mm -hmm. including the, the gadgetry that they were using. Mm -hmm. So they collect, the data collection was real time, is mm -hmm. going to a server real time, mm -hmm. it's not easy. Uh, to play around with it. Mm -hmm. You can't yeah. manipulate it. The servers are manipulated. Are yeah, I said also not right. easy. <laughs> okay. I said not easy. And also. it was backed up by other processes with yeah. Luma number. There's a lot they could sort of use mm -hmm. to, the, the, the to, to double yeah, check absolutely. whether the number mm -hmm. is making sense. But you you were happy with yours. I mean, I, that's, <laughs> I was anticipating a number around 520. Oh, okay. And it came out at 518. Right. I think the estimation ah, okay. was super. Very close. Hey, yeah. what did you use to <laughs> estimate yours? I think that's what uh, we should uh, ask. K and BS should be asking. Asking you, so in the next time they don't actually spend so much money. <laughs> no, they do have to do it. <laughs> but Eric, 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 yeah. you have a register or a registry births of births and, and deaths. Mm. Mm. It's a very straightforward, mm. and you have a general estimate mm. of uh, out migration mm -hmm. and in migration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. then there is the issue of the BBI. Mm -hmm. uh, where do you stand? Handshake, yes or no? Of course, we've heard leaders um, who are no. <laughs> <laughs> to shake or not I to would shake, like to. I would like to read this report mm. to see its proposals, mm. but I just want to repeat, uh, and I have been on record already saying, mm. you know, we are all jumping the gun, debating a report we haven't seen, proposals we haven't uh, read. Mm. I personally would like all of us to read whatever proposals are here in the BBI, but also Ugatuzi initiative has some proposals. Even the failed Punguza Mizigo Absolutely. had some proposals. We should not be afraid of ideas. What are the proposals in the Ugatuzi initiative? It's to strengthen, is to strengthen 
uh, devolution. Mm -hmm. And frankly, the Ugatuzi initiative also prefers, I mean, I see uh, in, your, in your print mm -hmm. uh, that uh, you're, you're saying the BBI is proposing a uh, prime minister. I don't know. It's what I'm reading in your, in, uh, yeah, your in system, the standard. In the standard. Mm -hmm. Ugatuzi likes a parliamentary system mm -hmm. for the simple reason that the presidency as an institution seems somehow to suck the, the, the uh, oxygen out of the room. It's not, <laughs> I mean, I, I, it is, and you see, institutions exist in, in, a bit in competition. Mm. And this institution of the presidency is such that it is able to muzzle and to, you know, and I don't think it's necessarily a deliberate thing. It is simply that uh, it's like the columns in a, in a building, mm -hmm. you know, and the role they play. So, we believe ourselves, certainly I believe, and many of my colleagues, that a parliamentary system is actually better for devolution. We also think there are certain things you can do in the representation. For instance, <coughs> you, you must really make sure that the interests of the Senate and the devolution are aligned, and we, and we can go into that in a little bit. So, mm. personally, let the ideas be put in the marketplace of ideas. Let us debate them. <coughs> But I say there's Properly. also the politicians who have said, mm -hmm. don't debate any other idea. Let's debate. Let, wait for this one. Mm. And this is the Honorable Prime Minister Raila Odinga has said that. Uh, uh, well, you know, you know, you know, BBI you in a kuja. You know, that, that, um, I don't know if that's what he has said. I totally disagree with him. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have our own ideas. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, nobody has a monopoly of ideas. And I think that to be in leadership is to accept that the next person may have a better idea than you. Than you. But no. why did the COG then wait to, I mean, there was an opportunity to go and meet with the, the BBI team, right? The BBI well, we team did, was going around them, the country. We gave them our views. So you gave them your views, yeah. and however, then now you're putting however, together your views uh, again uh, into a different... Uh, Eric, Eric, we as a devolution family, meaning the COG, mm. um, the CAF, which is a you know, county assemblies forum, mm. as well as Senate, and remember, Senate even had a select committee in the last session. Mm. And they produced a very big report about the, uh, the ideas of what could be improved in the Constitution. I'll give you an example. The division of revenue, so there is some untidiness in the law. Mm. If you don't remove that untidiness, you will witness what we witnessed this year – over and over again. What is the untidiness? The national executive, if you, if you read the fine, the, 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 if you read the actual words mm. of the constitution, Article 221 appears to allow the national executive to proceed to conclude its budget, whether or not the division to counties is concluded. Mm. Which obviously is a bit of an oxymoron. If if you are dividing something, <laughs> to, those is two. You can't proceed you with can't one piece one. without the other. Mm. Now, two twenty four, which deals with allocating to counties, or yes, uh, division to counties, mm. uh, commands that the county budget must be based on the division of revenue bill as passed by the assembly. Mm. So you have you create the drafting is untidy. And it created a loophole that the national executive uh, successfully used. Uh, exploited. <laughs> exploited. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> so, you, it, for the future of devolution, you need to uh, close that gap. Mm. Uh, uh, take the relationship between the Senate and the counties. Mm. Now, the senator is directly elected by citizens. Mm. So, their, their immediate allegiance is not to a county government. It is to the, the electorate. That, uh, you know, so... Uh, yeah, their interests are not actually aligned. And you have seen this over and over in that relationship. Uh, finally, take something like disease control, both for animals and for humans. Mm. Uh, for example, animals don't know and they don't care where is a county <laughs> boundary. <laughs> I mean, they, they don't go where they need to go. Just go where they need to go to look for grass <laughs> and rain water. Now, <clears throat> yet... Disease control is a county function. Mm. The mechanism to coordinate between counties, since counties don't have any control over the police, mm. because it's an enforcement issue. Who will stop cattle 
to ask the owner Across of the cattle, where, where is your documentation? <laughs> mm-hmm. Have they been vaccinated and so on? It's a police function. Yep. It makes it very difficult. So there's, there are bits and pieces of untidiness in the constitution that, that need, need to review. be tied up. Mm. We People are taking uh, uh, your comments break. and and looks. Let's go actually into the break because you're a bit uh, late uh, looking two, at traffic. Three words: Kieleweke, Tanga Tanga. Okay, Kieleweke and Tanga Tanga. And uh, yeah, you, you'll come and you'll come and like tell it. us. Okay, you'll okay. come and tell us. You'll pick your favorite word. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty-seven minutes to ten to ten o'clock. Yes, this is a situation room. It's Kenya's biggest conversation. Let's take a look at what's happening on the roads. Oh my goodness, uh, Thicker Road, they deliver a strong thing, as we they say. It's a bit of a mess, still at about 9.30, it's still bringing track. We don't know where the problem is today, but um, not giving up or not letting up, as it, as it were. Interestingly enough, the police vehicle that should be organizing traffic on Limuru Road has just fallen into a ditch, so... Um, that's not going to happen. <coughs> that's not going to happen anytime soon. And we still have some serious traffic on that road, Limuru Road, and that's leaning towards Gigiri and coming out then through the Parklands area. All right. Coming out of Westlands is not so bad. Coming to the city center, um, we still have a bit of traffic, but it's dissipating now. So the big area problems that we have today, Mombasa Road and Thicker Road, strong thing being delivered. 0719012600 is the number to call. If you do find an alternate, let us know and we will see how we can keep you moving this Monday morning. It was a little bit wet on the roads earlier, so that could explain why we still have those serious issues on those two major roads. But apart from that, everything else seems to be flowing smoothly. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Right. 94.4 Spice FM, Nairobi. The Like Keep Your Governor is in the studio this morning. Your comments and uh, questions via our hashtag, The Situation Room on Twitter, our Facebook page, Spice FM KE. Very many comments there. Let me just sample this one. Charles Kevin Kamau on Twitter says, I'm listening to The Like Keep Your Governor. I'm impressed by his comments and grasp on our path towards UHC. Paying cognizance of and consuming research output, he says, is key. I'd like to interview in my project, sir. I think he says he'll be in touch. (laughs) He'll be in touch. This is Nganga Alfred. He says, this is our progressive governor. He's very good. And we have, we'll be launching a new (gasps) supermarket tomorrow. Like, he has attracted very good investments compared to neighboring counties. Uh, Some positive sentiment here coming in, right? So, (laughs) Kieleweke, (laughs) Kieletanga. Choose one. Uh, <laughs> Red box or blue box? Uh, neither, Eric. Uh-huh. Neither. The, of course, the, these, these formations are the result of uh, uh, 2022, mm. uh, succession politics. Mm. Um, and here's my view, is that uh, everybody has a right to aspire. And we shouldn't, um, you know, sort of begrudge them simply because they, they, they are pursuing... Uh, their own ambition or career. Uh, what I do want to help persuade political leaders, some of the things we are seeing, you know, fracas in church, for mm. instance. Mm. I mean, I think that's so much shame on you. Behavior. Well, behavior. <laughs> 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 I mean, look, even if you don't like me, mm. why would you want to go and disrupt a church service? Mm. I mean, what good that comes out of it? Mm-hmm. Uh, I also think on the other side, uh, why do you need to provoke uh, reactions? So I am seeing my view, conduct and becoming, and it is way too early. Mm. We should be asking, answering the question, how many jobs have we created this year? Sure. We should mm. be solving the problem. Why do we have jobless growth? Mm. Why is this economy growing and it's not creating jobs? You're not going to solve that by calling your colleague names in a church. Mm. Yeah. So, 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 so you're, you're aligning. Uh, I am way above that saying. myself. No, I'm, I'm mm-hmm. I am way that. above that, yeah. Eric. I, I can't get involved in such. After all, you're uh, not a member of Jubilee. Jubilee. I am. I am an independently elected mm-hmm. governor, mm-hmm. and I honestly uh, believe in what I've told you. Mm. I think his conduct unbecoming. So get there, Jerry. So no, no. I was hoping to see you actually on the podium with ODM. In all honesty. Mm. <laughs> well, 
uh, during the Kibra elections. A lot of governors came out. It was a time to align themselves. But you have said uh, categorically that you'll be running for I a second term. I am elected independently. independently. Absolutely, I appreciate yes, that. Yes, and so. I don't need to follow some tribal leader to mm-hmm. put my ideas on the table. No, mm-hmm. thank you. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. So, so you don't align yourself with any of the national leaders? I say. am elected independently, Eric. Mm. He doesn't have to. But having <laughs> said that, what? where do you lean towards? Kieleke or Tanga uh, Neither. I actually don't lean to either of them (laughs) because neither of them, neither of them, Jerry, is putting anything worthwhile on the table. Right. Say say I held a gun to your head. If you held a gun to your head, if you held a gun to my head, I'll tell you this. (laughs) If you can tell me Mm. how we will solve jobless growth, Mm -hmm. then you'll have my ear. Mm. And you can see the the Kielaka side seems to be leaning on that in terms of development as opposed to rallying and electioneering. (laughs) Nobody has decided. Nobody has been able. (laughs) Nobody has been able to say how do we improve the structure of the economy Mm. Mm. so that growth results in jobs and Mm. higher incomes for people. Do you not see between Mm. the two divides that one is more development orientated while the other one is electioneering for 2022? I don't. I think they are actually. They are both politicking. They are both politicking. They are not. So then, doesn't that point to the fact that our leaders? And actually really are not interested in terms of the adev- development agenda for this country. I think you can be forgiven for, mm. for, for, for seeing it that way. Mm. Forgiven? <laughs> or, uh, I mean, I encouraged to continue uh, saying that and put it out in the light exactly. to say that we need to vote in leaders who are actually going Thank to push you. for such an agenda. Mm. Exactly. Mm. You know, it's like you're trying to put a cap on political utterances. <laughs> there are things politicians will say and we understand that's politicians speaking. Mm. The fundamental difference is when we see them doing what they have said they would do. Now, if you're asking this debate, the two groups, what is it in terms of actually encouraging given something as simple as political egalitarianism or development? What is it that they have said they would do along those lines that they have have actually done? done. done. Which one? So if there isn't, then they're just talking. Mm -hmm. And then we should be able to decipher between when it's just talking and somebody's actually trying to say, I'm trying to get this country to move forward. Very many of our political class solve problems by talking at them Mm. or talking about them. Hoping this problem will now <laughs> yes, yes, get yes. some kind of popcorn and effect and then move. And when you, you know? ask a question, they give you more talk. <laughs> what is mm. lyrical? Mm. You know, the, I, I'm sorry, Jerry and, and colleagues. Look, it is so-and-so's bedroom. So, how many jobs did that create? <laughs> Tell me. Yeah, what what know, incomes you, does, you that, know, does that <laughs> add? Poor <laughs> Kabisa. Honestly. You, know, you, you, you <laughs> politic to get to leadership so that you can actually no, create the jobs. No. That's must what you look, look, you, you can't, you can't Jerry, politics. No. We must to all. be in politics... To be in politics is not an invitation to be mediocre. Mm. To be in politics is an invitation to, to manage at a very high level. To no, be excellent. And to bring, earlier, bring solutions to the table. There's something you said that I, I, I liked very much in terms of the relationship between leadership and uh, politics. That you can be a politician without leadership, but uh, leadership requires some politics. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm alluding to. In terms of even at the, at the helm of national politics or of national leadership, there will be some politicking, which is what we're seeing with these two factions. I was hoping you'd be Able to declare the, the the truth of the matter that you're Kiweleke, and <laughs> <laughs> the truth of the matter, Jerry, Jerry. coming from Jerry about you. Yes, please. <laughs> the truth of the matter is that I am an independent. Mm. The truth of the matter is that I am interested in leaders, not just uh, who in, in frontline politics, mm. but in leaders who uh, want to provide mm. a, a reasoned. Um, approach mm. to the future of Kenya, and I think if you look at uh, my last, uh, you know, uh, both my la- the last two uh, general elections mm-hmm. that I've participated with, you will see that that is actually my political history. Right? How did you get yeah. into politics? Well, look, I I was working for IFC for uh, quite some time, and a lot of my work involved trying to improve policy. Mm. A policy for leasing, policy for mortgages, policy for bond markets, and so on. And it was clear to me that it's not enough for us as middle class, particularly technocrats like you and me, to complain that uh, there are too many politicians on the table and they don't understand. Mm. I think many of us have to step in. Enter the foray. Enter mm. the foray mm. so that perhaps then we can have a better conversation. Right. Um, you know, easier said than done, of course, but that's actually the way it went. Right. Yeah.
And that's how you got in. And well, Fantastic. how I got in was that I went to campaign in like if you have asked. And, and, and what is evident? And some things were shocking. And yes. some things, uh, but your electorate seemed to have agreed with you. Because mm. when you get elected in uh, a place, a geographical area that has that multiplicity of ethnicity, that, that's why I asked the question. It speaks volumes about what it is they perceive. You had been an MP. Yes. So you had a yardstick from which they could judge. Absolutely. Yes. So yes. that's why when I asked, has it given you an advantage when it comes to national platform? Uh, the answer should be yes, it does. Yes, it does. Mm. But you're not interested in national politics come 2022. Jerry, there's no stand. politician who as is not in, in, no, in the higher position. No, you said you're running, you're running he's, for he's seeking se re-election. Yes. I am seeking re-election. As a launch pad too. It, 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 understand it like this. <laughs> <laughs> I've refused to accept it. <laughs> every politician, every, every person mm -hmm. has ambition. Mm -hmm. um, if my people, as politicians, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> tell you, if, if my people were to see that we have a, a fair shot, mm -hmm. then we'll probably throw our hat in the ring. I mean, obviously, we, we, I have a mission, but I think I, I, uh, my, Number one priority mm -hmm. is to move the Laikipia economy mm -hmm. um, to a certain level. Mm. Double uh, digits? Uh, it's not just growth. It's mm -hmm. what is the outcome of a, of a whole growth. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's like this. this. This cycle, this political cycle, I expect to move uh, uh, personal income, mm -hmm. so average personal income, mm -hmm. to something like 700 shillings per person per day. Right. Mm. That's my target. That's very ambitious. Then, mm. in the next cycle, I expect to be able to entrench certain things, mm -hmm. like mass production. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, if you take this SME I'm talking about that is making cars, <laughs> how do we move from them having batch production of 14, 15 cars to producing uh, 100 cars a day? So uh, manufacturing, that's, industrialization. Yeah, exactly. mm. yeah, so mass production. Mm. Yeah. Coming back to now the what you're talking about, you say you... Uh, prefer you are aligned to the idea of a uh, parliamentary system of, of government. Indeed. And there are those that have said a parliamentary system will, among other things, also help to sort out the issue of multi ethnicity. Do I believe you see so too. that way. How would that address uh, the, th that challenge of ethnicity? You see, the, 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 a parliamentary system, particularly if, if we begin to even say, think about things like proportional representation. Mm. It removes a little bit the need uh, for my tribe to be behind me. Yeah. So uh, uh, it doesn't eliminate it completely. It mm. reduces that need for my tribe to be behind me, mm. to, for me to ascend to leadership. Exactly. Secondly, the, there, is more, there is more direct accountability. Because remember, the government rises and falls in parliament as opposed to a presidential system mm. where, you know, once government is in place, then you have to wait for the next electoral mm. cycle. But in a, in, a in a proper parliamentary system, the fortunes of government rise and fall within, within the assembly, which means there is a little bit more direct accountability mm. uh, on the part of the prime minister mm. because if you lose the confidence, I mean, take Theresa May and then, so, you know, if you lose the confidence, then of the you members, can, then you fall. Then you fall. Now, those that actually have uh, spoken out and uh, expressed their fears on that actually base it specifically on that. Looking at the kind, the kind of uh, MPs that we have in our parliament and then looking at that thing of rising and falling of governments, it will not be based on issues or uh, ideas. It will be based on, you know, who, uh, who do we feel, who, is, who are we aligning to this time politically. So the, the politics of, of funerals and <laughs> will be... Will be we'll, we'll come into the yes, assembly. and will be collapsing governments regularly. The... the I think the, the best way to approach it is like this, Eric. Uh, both parliamentary and presidential system can work. I say can work mm. and have worked. And they have also failed in different nations. Yeah. So it's, it's not enough to just say it's either or. I think the thing of it is that once you make one choice, you need to be consistent in a variety of other choices following it. So for instance, if you, if you uh, uh, go for a parliamentary system, you sort of then have to say what safeguards 
and some countries have gone to how many how many uh, motions of no confidence can be brought, for example, within a certain within period of time. Of parliament. Yeah, so that you don't just wake up every day <laughs> and then you you, you yeah. do. You're competing so, on, on motions and counter motions. Oh, yeah. how, how rigorous yeah. the process is. It's yeah. not it's yeah. not an easy process, and that if there's layered steps and so on, it's not yeah. something you can wake up as and, you and, say. And, and, and just, yeah. But you see, we are preempting a discussion mm. on what will be the outcome of certain things being put into motion. Mm. Did we know country systems would work the way they do? We didn't. Mm. They had to be enacted. We had to put it into practice for us to get an idea of what they actually can do. And we are aware of just how much they can do. Mm. Let, let me disagree with just a little bit there. Yes. We, we did have the first experiment with devolution at independence. And it lasted about two years, if that, or two and a half. Mm. And we did know that the center will always try to muzzle the devolved unit. Yeah. That's why we wrote the division of revenue into the Katiba. Mm. Although, obviously, uh, some of the drafting was a bit weak. Mm. Now, how was the first devolution killed? It was very straightforward. It was starved of cash. So if you look at the history books, in 64 and 65, what you see is that every month, nurses and teachers are going on strike mm -hmm. because the regional governments did not have enough money to meet their payroll. Why? Because they were being muzzled. Uh, that's why, for instance, teachers in the teachers' union were not keen to be devolved because of that experience from the 60s. Mm. We do know, we, uh, and the doc, uh, data shows, that even that brief uh, devolution you could see that the economy is bubbling in many more places. Vibrant. Uh, vibrant in many more places. So there was some, some uh, uh, experience. And I tell you this. If you look at the behavior of the national executive this year and the use of this um, weakness in Article 221 of the Constitution, you can't help but wonder, is history repeating itself? It has attempted to, but... When I say we didn't understand, I mean precisely that. Mm. The population of people who have understood are mostly all dead. Okay? <laughs> Jeez. No, no, no I, I'm actually being factual. Yeah, right? yeah. And, and, and unless you are a student of history, devolution as applied in the times in which we live in was a completely new entity. That I agree. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the practice of it, even the thinking behind it, anybody who thought of it realized this is a wonderful thing. Mm. And, and, and it was set out to do wonderful things. But when all these things were now put into practice, we now started seeing and experiencing things that before the experience, <laughs> before this actualization, we, we, would we never couldn't have, have really known. Really known. That yeah. really was my mm -hmm. point. True, true. And I accept uh, yes. what, an associate yes. at that what, point. Can I ask a question just mm -hmm. out of general knowledge uh, for the historians or those who are still alive having understood? <laughs> <laughs> what, how did we divide our, what were the divisions in terms of geographical divisions? Now we have counties. Was it under were, the provin were, provinces? Were, that's how provinces ultimately came, came to be. Right. Because the, the regions were the provinces. Mm. And each, each, each uh, province actually had uh, senators. I think each, each province had like, two senators. Mm -hmm. Right. And when it was being dismantled, one of the questions was, what do you do then with the senators? Mm -hmm. And the, then the crafty politicians of that time, mm -hmm. uh, very clever uh, uh, people, uh, so, you know, they are not, they, they are, most of them are alive. They said they're nearly all dead. <laughs> they, <laughs> they, they came up with a practical solution, uh -huh. which was that why don't these senators be, uh, get become. into the National Assembly? Right. So, you know, on Thursday, the, the, <laughs> the Senate uh, resolved. Uh -huh. To move into the assembly, and yes, on Tuesday yes, yes. they moved into the assembly, they and, and they got, the, and that was it. They dissolved themselves <laughs> into the assembly. Into the assembly yes. They just got into assembly and yes. became members. Yes. Of became yes. members, yes. Of yes. and and now <laughs> some boundaries had to be carved out. And you, if you look at some of the protected, uh, protected constituencies, mm -hmm. that's how they came about, like Rari, Odaya, and a few others, which were carved out of existing constituencies in mm. order for the, uh, for the senator, senator to, to have, have a, 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 constituency. a constituency. Perhaps that sets a premise for a question that I have, and maybe then it does um, relate to maybe more to members of parliament, but to leadership in general. Mm. We find that there's more uh, fervor or mm. there's a greater rush to get things done when it directly involves or rather directly affects in a positive or negative manner 
the individual in leadership, member of parliament, especially where we've seen things like, you know, the clamor for increase of salaries or mm-hmm. things like that. But when we see other things that would directly benefit or disadvantage the citizenry, we don't see so much excitement. And it actually does bother us at some point because we say if we saw this kind of um, excitement across board when it comes to the development of the people generally, all the time mm. that we would feel a little bit more encouraged about our leadership what is your f- what is your thought about that uh my thought is that we certainly we we did well to begin to invest in the capacity or, or shall i say capacity available mm. so that it's not necessarily the mp for instance drafting of laws mm. policy analysis understanding the budget and so on. That's why the budget office was created. That's why members began to get certain facilities Mm. to allow them. So, you see, if you ask the question about uh, should we increase your salary, it's a fairly straightforward, easy question. Yeah. Well, yes. Yeah. So, (laughs) it's easy to get it. But if you ask a different question, is interest rate caps the solution to the question of access to finance, mm. which I found you discussing earlier. Mm. You know, the answer is actually counterintuitive. Mm. It is not. Uh, but you would think that by capping interest rates, mm. that's how you will get more monies mm. in an affordable way to small business. Mm. But as the data, even in Kenya now, shows, that's actually not the case. Mm. Now, to understand that whole finance and economics, Maneno, there, as to what, therefore, is the correct thing to be done. You need an expert. That, you need some work and some expertise. Uh, now that Even we have you in studio, level. Mr. Expert. <laughs> <laughs> Did I walk just yes. into that one? <laughs> yes. Uh, Feet first. Ex- yes. Explain. <laughs> mm. Explain interest rate cap and why it was important to remove it. The, it's about uh, the market allocates set the market allocates resources. Mm-hmm. Now, the issue about lack of access to finance, mm. or that whatever finance is is there is expensive for small business, mm. is not really about uh, the rate of interest. It is about the behavior of government. Now, it goes like this. Government is willing to pay 14% interest when I, as a banker, lend that government money Mm -hmm. when they issue a bond. And every week, we issue a bond, 50 billion, Mm -hmm. 30 billion, 100 billion. Mm -hmm. Government is willing to pay 14%. Sometimes 15%. Mm -hmm. Why would you as a banker go to Karatina to look for an SME or go to Nyanyuki to look for an SME? You simply like the write the government a check and you sit and easy. you sit pretty. Mm. So the primary issue about why SMEs are not accessing finance is about the behavior of government. So now you have to relate that to this question are we borrowing too much? Mm. Mm-hmm. Now, some experts will tell you, no, we have the capacity to pay. Well, we may have the capacity to pay, but that behavior is affecting. Now, I want to remind you, Eric, because I am quite sure you were working even then. Mm. During Kibaki 1, you started seeing banks putting tents on the sidewalk. Yes. Asking you, don't you want Mukopoya Salo? Hawking mm. loans. Hawking <laughs> loans. Because what had happened in the first two years of Kibaki 1, government was very careful not to borrow. In the local market. And therefore, banks found themselves with so much liquidity and no assets within which to place this liquidity. Mm. Now, that's actually the technical reason why access to finance is an issue. Mm. So the government misbehaving. It's government's actions in, in, a, in a financial Set. uh, setting. Mm. Well, as I leave that, there's no reason why government should be borrowing short term. 
So this thing of two year bonds, three year bonds, government should be borrowing twenty year so mm-hmm. that the yield curve is is proper. It's uh, anyway, it is behavior of government. <laughs> I don't want to be too bottom line. To, uh, Techn- technical I, wish, wish, yeah. Yeah. I yep. wish we'd actually started this one a bit earlier so you could <laughs> even go into why is the government borrowing so much and what should we do. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency Dirito Muraidi, for joining us this morning. He's the governor of Laikipia. So I'm going to give you one minute to give a message, not just to the people of Laikipia, but to the people of Kenya, because you're being heard everywhere. Uh, well, thank you, Eric, and thank you, all of you. We, I think we have had a very wonderful conversation. Mm. What I'd like to say to all of us as Kenyans, as we approach this season to debate uh, whether or not we want to change certain things in the Constitution, and as different political formations ramp up uh, for competition in 2022, we must really remember we are one country, and that um, we... The, mo- the better our politics, the better the outcome. Mm-hmm. And that we need to reduce the premium we put on tribe and try and increase the premium we put on ideas that can help Kenya. Thank you. Philosophical. Siti <laughs> uh, Muga, what will you say? Actually, I, the historical perspectives that His Excellency has brought into the discussion has made an understanding of some of these debates that we have, like, say, the formation of the county system and the debate around it much clearer. And then, given the background he intimated about, it's clearly something he understands and has probably helped propel his work as governor in the county of Laikipia forward because uh, somebody with that sort of understanding actually has the gift of ensuring that things are actually done the way they should. Mm. Jerry? Thank you. I'm thoroughly impressed. I really enjoyed uh, the the sort of chat we've had. Of course, you've refused to go towards my political <laughs> questions, but uh, I, you, re- you invited us on the 10th and 11th. What I'd ask at this stage is perhaps you speak to our bosses on the way out so that we get those days off and we can attend. <laughs> we'll come and your, have a situation w- room. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is it? A native technology fair? Indigenous. Yes. Indigenous, Indigenous, Indigenous technology fair. Mm-hmm. Excellent. So, mm-hmm. so the thing is that, uh, sorry, we're, we're, uh, the thing is that uh, whatever is being shown and, and whatever you're doing, Mm. is indigenous is something that local solutions, mm-hmm. is, is local solutions. Yeah. thank you very much 